of the disastrous effect that this will have on the morale of the American teenager. No, I'm not suggesting that the boy doesn't want to go into the army. It's just that I... Well, no, sir, it seemed to me that... No, I, I was not implying anything. No, sir, wait, two weeks from today, at the induction center? But I... He'll be there. Rosie, thank God you've come. This is the end of the Alme Lou Music Corporation. Conrad Birdie is going into the army. And your faithful secretary is hereby submitting her resignation. What? I just dropped in to say goodbye, Albert, darling. Lots of luck. Wait, Rosie, you can't do this to me. Not today of all days. Oh, my pills. Rosie, where are my pills? The little white ones I take when I'm overwrought. Here. Wait, not so much. Break it in half. You're 33 years old, Albert. You can take a whole aspirin. I am not 33. I am a long way from 33. I will not be 33 until tomorrow. What? It's no use, Albert. My mind's made up. I've been with Alme Lou for eight years now, and we both know I've been more than just a secretary to you. Rosie, those were moments of madness. Well, between the moments of madness in the office, I put in a good 90 hour week. And for what? A $5 raise in 1954 and a bottle of our page last Christmas? <laughs> Promise her anything but give her our page, Rosie. <laughs> yeah, but not 16th of an ounce. Besides, this is something much more important. <laughs> Rosie, if you are referring to anything of a more permanent relationship between you and me, I'm not ready for it. And besides, there are religious differences. Spanish is not a religion! Oh, and if it's part of the company you're after, the answer to that is no two. Alme Lou is me, Mama, and Lou. And any change in that would kill that wonderful woman who bore me. Nothing could kill your mother, Albert. Except maybe a silver bullet. And that will not drop poor old Lou either. He loved you, Rose. I loved Lou, too. Sure, he was born, he was loyal, and he was lovable, but he died six years ago. Besides, he was a wired hair terrier. I don't want any part of this company. This is something much more important. <laughs> Rosie, if you are going to discuss what I think you are going to discuss... There is I'm nothing to discuss, discuss Albert. Conrad Birdie is going into the Army, and I quit. There's nothing you can do but go back to college to get... Rosie! To I'm up to my ears in debt. Conrad Burke has got a $50,000 guarantee, which I cannot pay off. And I have just taken a severe overdose of aspirin. Oh. Will you listen to me, Albert? This may be your last chance. I'm serious.
Stay with me. Help me get the money to pay back Conrad's guarantee. And I promise, I promise, as soon as I'm out of the red, I'll dissolve the company and go back to the academic life. I'll be on. Of course it might take a couple of years, but I'm sure that by 1973 or 74, that we'll have just enough money to pay off every cent of it. One of those. Something that's going to push that date up a few years. Here, pick a name. Pick what name? Rosie, what are you talking about? Okay, I'll do it for you then. Okay, Kim McAfee, age 15, President and Recording Secretary of the Conrad Brady Fan Club, number 2748 from Sweet Apple, Ohio. Yes, hello, Mary. Give me Sweet Apple, Ohio, please. The numbers, capital 7, double 8, 2, 0, oh, and call me right back. One second. Who's Kim McNack, whatever her name is? Kim McAfee, Albert. Something that's going to sing you back to college with the biggest hit song this business has ever seen. It's called One Last Kiss. I've never heard of it. That's because you haven't written it yet. But when you do, and when that one last kiss is from Comrade Birdie on his way into the big cold army for two long years, and when he kisses, one of his fans chosen at random from 2,007,000 hysterical teenagers, Conrad Birdie will be the hottest soldier since Joan of Arc. <laughs> Rose, I think I'm beginning to see it. We'll cut the record here in New York. Take that greasy bongo playing car thief back to Sweet Apple. Let him kiss the kid. And release the record. <gasps> Albert, you'll have enough money to go to college for the rest of your life. Oh, it's wonderful. And I promise, I promise, as soon as everything is settled, it'll be just the two of us, in perfect bliss. You know, I'll get a job teaching English, and we'll be bliss, kiss. That rhymes. <laughs> I wonder if anyone's ever used that before. Who um, cares? It'll be great for a song. Let's see. Oh, one last kiss. It gives so much bliss. What is your dentifrice? That is way too clinical. An <laughs> English teacher, an English teacher, someday.
we've been trying to get through for nearly three quarters of an hour. Thank you, Doris. I'll take you down there. She's done it with long distance, and I just can't imagine who could possibly be calling from long distance. Wait. What did you say? I said, thank you, Doris. Well, there's no need to be upset. It's modern to call your mother by her first name. It makes the mother and daughter more like pals. And your father, why I'll call him Harry, naturally. Yeah. By the way, I think Harry took the news about Hugo and I awfully well. Don't you, Doris? This is she. Yes, I'll wait. I don't know. Yesterday I was a mother. Today I'm a... How? Uh, are you sure you wouldn't like to call me mom? That's modern. I'm sorry, but times are changing, and you've got to go along with them or be left behind with the old folks. By the way, Doris, have, have you got a cigarette? I seem to have run out. <laughs> I am not an old man. I was 18 in World War II. Conrad Murray is coming here to kiss me? Doris? Mother? <clears throat> Mommy? Uh, baby? Baby, what is it? What's wrong? It's Conrad Murray, Mommy. He's going to kiss me. That's nice, dear. Put your head on Mommy's shoulder. You don't understand. Conrad Murray. Is coming here to Sweet Apple to kiss me goodbye. Oh, mommy, mommy. Oh, I never thought I'd say it, but God bless Conrad Birdie. <laughs> Or sing. She would 
and listen to me. Now she's a mean old thing. So spread sunshine all over the place. Just put on a happy face.
and I agree that I should give up Al Lou. Mama, what's, what's the matter? Nothing's the matter. You just killed me, that's all. What? Lou, I'm coming. I'm on my way up. Mama, Mama, you don't understand, okay? See, Rose thought, no, I mean, I thought, I mean, we were both thinking, and she suggested, I mean, I suggested that we would just, uh -huh. Mama, here, take some money and take a cab home. The subways are way too crowded. Nothing's too crowded for a mother. I'll take the IRT, that's the worst subway. Mama. Enjoy yourself, son. Take care. Wear your heavy coat. Be careful crossing the street. Keep your money on your inside pocket. Wear your robbers. Eat a hot lunch.
Hey. Yes, Albert, I was just thinking of you. Uh, okay. Uh, Conrad's speech, where is it? In the briefcase. Good. Bring it. The mayor's almost done talking. Come on. Let's go.
is my breakfast, and I intend on enjoying it. Now, dear, your father has the right to enjoy his eggs, but I'm sure he wouldn't mind if we just started quietly clearing away some of these other things. Now, I know the house has been a bit hectic this morning, but Kim has gone through a lot of trouble to prepare a very special breakfast for Mr. Birdie, and I want to make sure that everything is ready and waiting for him when he comes down. After all, he is a national figure, and I want to show those New York people that we here in the sweet Avenue on the street a national figure. I mean, it doesn't really matter to me that much, but for kids' sake, I just... There. All finished. Did you enjoy your breakfast, dear? Good. Now, if you'll just hurry along. Doris, I'm not budging from the spot until I smoke my cigarette, read my newspaper, and drink my coffee. I'm sorry, dear. I didn't have enough time to make you coffee this morning. How about a nice warm seven up? Warm and tall, pinch of paper. I hope you don't mind when I'm cutting off these stories about Conrad. I have tried to run this house on a democratic basis. I have extended the privilege of self-determination to the woman I have married and the children I have sired. The right to vote has been denied to no one, according to sex, race, or political affiliation. There has been no taxation without representation, and open comments have openly been arrived at. Last night, I gave up my room to a guest referred to me as as facts, telephone calls were made on my phone to New York, Chicago, Fairbanks, Alaska, and Hong Kong. I slept on a camp cot with my feet in the fireplace and my head in an ashtray. And outside my window, 3 Harvey Street, we love you, Conrad, 4,733 times. I have just lost two fried eggs. Gentlemen, the democracy is over. Parliament is resolved. The Magna Carta is revoked, and the Nero is back in town. You know, offer an emperor a warm seven up. Oh, oh Mr. McAfee, I hope you won't mind staying off the phone for a few minutes. I'm expecting a long distance call from New York. Perfectly all right. I just want to burn Rome. Mother, what's wrong? Uh, nothing. Just a deer. Your father's just. Excited about Conrad being here, that's all. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming! Mother, you call the kid look at the egg. The girl, he's coming! You better hurry if you want to watch him eat. Oh, Harry McAfee, a 
appearing with Thank <laughs> you. 
Mama, I do not need another secretary. I've got Rosie. What does Rosie need a job for? In a year or two, she'll be living off of Social Security. Huh. Well, listen, I don't just type. You, uh, you, you do other things, huh? I turn dance. Oh. I figured I could help you with the secretary stuff, and you would help me get into show business. Here, hold this. Oh, 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 yeah, we 
just a farewell present for you and Miss Rasputin. Where to good help? Wait, Rose, you can't just leave me here all alone. Oh, Albert, you're not alone. You're on television. Get out of town. 
Not until I've had my say, Rose. I just wanted to let you know that thanks to Mama's quick thinking, the kiss will take place after all. Tomorrow morning at the train station before Conrad leaves. So, it looks like you have failed, Miss Alvarez, as anyone must fail who tries to buck Al Peterson. One of the giants, the titans, one of the king kongs of the music industry. <laughs> what did I ever see in him? How did I ever think that he was nice? Take it from me, I paid an awful price. It was rough from the start. Broken date, broken nails, broken heart. An empire builder, a colossus. Get out of my way, you defrocked English teacher. <laughs> Mama, 
Why didn't you tell me this before? I tried to, sweetheart, darling. But you kept bringing up a certain party from south of the border. I do not understand what his problem is. He knows how much this means to me. Conrad! Conrad! Take it easy, Albert. I'm coming. And before you say anything, I want to let you know I've made up my mind. I'm tired of waking up at night every morning, having people watch me when I eat and have that kid poke me in the eye. You don't get it, Albert. I want to go out. I want to meet a couple of young chicks. You still don't get it, do you? I'm ten. Mama, don't just stand there and do something. Oh, oh, oh. oh um, Conrad, have you ever thought in terms of a more mature woman? Man, I hope I never get that tense. <laughs> now look, buddy boy, this is my last night out before I go in the army, and I'm going out. You are not going anywhere without my permission. It says so in your contract. Mama, get the contract. It's in the... Never mind, I've got it. Conrad, you stay right here.
long. The coast is clear. Is Alvarez there? 
Yeah, I'm old Warren. Hey, Fidel Castro, there's some guy named Peter's gonna want to speak to you. <laughs> Tell that Weasley little rat I'm not here. That proves she's there! Who else would know I'm a Weasley little rat? <laughs> Rosie, you have to help me fight Conrad. And furthermore, if I were this Rose, which I am not, any mention of the name Conrad would sure, certainly have me hanging up. Wait, so stop! Wait, Rosie, please, please! I won't talk about Conrad. We can talk about anything else. You and I. You and me. Anything. Rosie. Please. I want you to bring up a subject I'm sure is on 
Everybody mind tonight? Boy, 
Good night, Mom. And my name is not Sunny Boy. Good night, Albert! <laughs> I did it! Mr. Peterson, have you seen Conrad and Kim? Ah, Mr. McAfee, a pleasure to see you as always. Unfortunately, I must tell you that Conrad's affairs no longer interest me. I'm here to speak to Rosie. I've come to tell her that... Wait. Conrad and Kim? They run off together. And Mr. Peterson, if we don't buy them soon, I have to call the FBI. What? Who's in charge of it now, dear? Is it Peter Lawford yet? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that there's nothing to worry about. Now... Have you seen Ursula? Ursula? Is she missing too? It's 10 o'clock now from everywhere. Mr. Peterson, my... I... Matt, you haven't seen my heart yet, have you? Oh, they're probably all down at the drugstore. Probably having one of those gang wars. Gang wars? Are you Now, wait a 
a minute. We'll follow you to the ends of the earth. We'll never go. Oh. Now that stuff isn't as fun as I made it out to be. We can start right now. Let's have an orgy. <laughs> <laughs>
me give you a bit of advice To cross Spanish roads in the twice Her majesty has found So don't mess around Her heart, she is cold like ice When Albert I will dance to the bolero Your cha-cha is the nicest honky-tonks They wear the cutest moustache and sombrero my handsome black lover from the Bronx. So, now that you've met the Spanish Bronx, you'll never forget Spanish Bronx. She'll told you she'll take, but what men can blame? The Russian thinks the Spanish Bronx. Not Danish, not British, not Swedish, not Yiddish. Any 
but now I love each blossom that I see. There's one rose sweeter than 